Hey guys, HDV here and welcome to a brand new video. Today we've got so much stuff to go over. New Nintendo Switch 2 leaks have popped up. We also have some major Pokemon leaks to take a look at as well from the Terra League. There's a lot of things to break down and get into today. So if you're excited for the video, make sure to drop a like down below. It's trying to 500 likes, it really helps out. Leave a comment with your thoughts on anything we cover in today's video. Subscribe if you're brand new, ring the notification bell. With all of that out of the way, let's get into the video and I really hope that you enjoy. So, starting things off, let's go over these new Nintendo Switch 2 leaks, rumors, whatever you want to call it. They are very, very credible kind of inside information about the upcoming Nintendo Switch successor. But we do have this post here by My Nintendo News saying Nintendo Switch Online Data Miner discovers 4K resolution option and support for mesh shaders. Um, so basically, straight off the bat, let's just quickly take a look at what mesh shaders are. So for those who are asking about what mesh shaders are, this is a Reddit reply. So this is taken from Game Dev. It says mesh shaders replace vertex shaders, geometry shaders, and uh, tessellation shaders in the render pipeline. So it's a new shader stage that works like a compute shader and emits meshes. It lets developer implement advanced culling and LOD strategies on the GPU in a very performant way. It can also be used for uh, parametric geometry like trains and stuff like that. So mesh shaders are only available on NVIDIA 20 series or newer GPUs. That's quite a bit of information to take in. Obviously, a lot of that might not make a lot of sense to a lot of people. It doesn't really make too much sense to me, but it looks like it's mainly going to be used for um, like terrains and stuff like that, which is good. Makes the games look nicer. But this is the actual information taken from my Nintendo News. So this is the actual post here from a uh, from the data miner or the leak or whatever. A data miner on social media platform Blue Sky has discovered that the latest version of the Nintendo Switch Online playtest program has added support for both mesh shaders and 4K resolution. This discovery has inevitably led to speculation about the next console from Nintendo, which is set to be revealed sometime this financial year, which ends 31st of March 2025. So um, this is obviously from Watertune, who is the data miner, saying, Me, when the new G3D2 version of the NSO playtest software added mesh, let support on the console without mesh shaders. And we also have Necro Felipe talking about this as well. I'm just going to let it load. I've never actually been on Blue Sky before, but... Um, Either way, uh, let's try and translate it. I've not been on this website before. Uh, it's not translating. Oh, there we go. So this data mining of the NSO playtest program has turned up some interesting code changes that indicate two potential things for the Switch 2, being 4K resolution output and also mesh shaders as well. So 4K would be obviously incredible for the Nintendo Switch 2, and it looks even more likely now because of, the, um, of this uh, data mine. So fingers crossed. Hopefully we get some Switch 2 news soon anyway, but uh, yeah, looking like the actual successor may have some uh, some 4K resolution support as well, which is really cool. We also have Kilios kind of talking about the Switch 2 and Pokemon in general as well. This was taken from a few days ago. This was on the 6th of November. Well, I say a few days ago. It's about a week now or so. Um, but obviously Kilios is kind of like uh, some sort of like insider. They have obviously some credible sources and stuff like that, but they're not like a leak or anything like that. But they're saying, you know, for the announcement of the future Nintendo Switch console, uh, console they have no interest in announcing it before March 2025. So again, this is looking more and more likely um, that we aren't going to see it until around March 2025, especially with the rumor that we're going to get a Nintendo Direct for the Switch 1 around February time, which obviously just kind of helps the idea that the Switch 2 is not going to come out before them or get announced before them. So obviously Mario released tomorrow. This was before Mario and, Luigi's, uh, Mario and Luigi came out, obviously. A Nintendo Switch Christmas pack, so we're getting that for kind of the Christmas sales. We're getting Donkey Kong in January. And then obviously in February, we're going to get a Pokemon Day Presents in late February with info on Legends EA. So we're kind of getting something every single month, really. So obviously Mario and Luigi this month, Nintendo Switch next month, Donkey Kong January, Pokemon February. And then obviously they announced the Switch 2 in March. So when they said it's, gonna not, it's not going to be announced by March 2025... They most likely meant it's not going to get... Well, they didn't say it's not going to get announced before then, but they said it's going to get announced by then. And yeah, they are probably going to leave it till the last minute, which is really annoying for everybody else because we just want to see the console, but it looks like that's going to be the situation. Either way, though, that's all the Switch 2 stuff. Uh, moving on, we have some pretty big Pokemon Sun and Moon leaks to go over. This is all from the Terra Elite. This is posted on Nintendo Everything, saying Pokemon Sun and Moon reveals tons of scrapped features and ideas. Um, so obviously there's no images and stuff because obviously I can't show you the images because of copyright and all that and you know I don't want the Nintendo ninjas coming for me but basically um, these are all the scrap things that were going to be in Pokemon Sun and Moon and there's there's a lot of stuff as you can see there's there's loads and loads of stuff to take a look at today it's um, it's a bit unfortunate that we lost all this stuff but this Terra Leak is showing that 
They have a lot of really good plans, but they just never really implement them. Uh, but either way, as part of the ongoing information leak from the Game Freak hack, more new details have been revealed regarding scrapped ideas and features for Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon. To say that there's a lot here would be an understatement. The first feature is about something called Guardians. This would have been in places. Uh, this would have been in place of Z moves, which were a big hook in Pokemon Sun and Moon. Pokemon would be able to change their type based on the Miracle Stone, and a Guardian avatar would appear next to them with the same type. Guardians were also technically planned to be a fifth move. So different effects were planned on the type, as for example, Electric Guardians make all Pokemon the field, on the field super effective to Electric moves, while Water Guardians bring down the speed of opposing Pokemon. Players could visit Miracle Mountain to receive these stones. So what we've just covered above is only scratching the surface of cut ideas, features, and more for Pokemon Sun and Moon. So Central Leaks is rounded up everything else, of which there's a massive amount. Get the full rundown below. So these are the general features and modes that got scrapped. So Poke Jobs, unlike the Poke Jobs from Sword and Shield, these Poke Jobs are done by the player. And depending on which one, special benefits and extra effects in battles can be activated. So each job also comes with a uniform for customization. So we missed out on a lot of character customization in regards to uniforms and stuff for Pokemon Sun and Moon. We have Pokemon Breeder. So you can take on the role of a breeder to raise Pokemon to their peak form. If you meet certain conditions for the Pokemon you raise, the owners may trade you for rare Pokemon in return. So we would have got more of an insight into Pokemon breeding. Pokemon Ranger. Uh, so predict the region, uh, protect the region by tackling problems happening throughout the region. Uh, so utilize different functions from your Pokemon and consider which Pokemon is best for each task, like wildfires. With this feature, you gain access to special areas, uh, home to special Pokemon you usually can't encounter. And like I say, all of these would have come with outfits as well. So you would have got an outfit for the breeder, the ranger, this Pokemon coach, the baker, stuff like that. So the coach, you can help train other trainers via various conditions and build your reputation. If your reputation reaches a certain point, a famous trainer can challenge you. So we might have had even more kind of returning characters in Sun and Moon. Pokemon Baker, so you could create special bakery items while also cultivating berries for your ingredients. You'll eventually be able to open a store that grows bigger the more successful you are. So you could have had your own bakery store. Uh, Pokemon Researcher, so you can complete research tasks as an assistant to the professor of the region. Uh, the structure of this is very similar to Legends Arceus. Could have had Poke Porter, so partake in a mini game where you develop, uh, deliver packages all over the region. This goal is to make the most efficient deliveries with a good time, and stacking the packages is a puzzle in itself. However, if you fail the deliveries, you will uh, be fined Poke Dollars, so you actually get fined <laughs> if you fail the deliveries. And also Poke Dance, so a special facility where you can compete against other trainers as well as friends and people online in a dance competition. It's a mini game where you control both the main character and your Pokemon, keeping the best rhythm with the music similar to Dance Dance Revolution. In a tournament style competition, where the more you win, the higher your rank increases, and uh, you gradually become an idol in the region. So that would have been a new online kind of game mode. And also, uh, we would have had Poke Stage. In this mode, Pokemon take a backseat, and instead, the main characters are the focus as they are an idol performing for their fans. Performances are com uh, completely customizable, including special unlockable actions for the main character can take on stage. Depending on their performance, the player gets an audience rating from the crowd, which can affect the HP bar of the main character. You can even invite your Pokemon to perform with you on stage. Uh, we would have also had Pokemon Hero Time, so in this mode the player can become a superhero and tackle events made for the mode. Like, there's images for all of these as well, by the way. Obviously, I can't show them, but there's literally images for every single one of these jobs and stuff. Uh, but when in Hero Mode, you can only have one Pokemon in your party at a time. Although battles are standard, each battle ends with a finishing move that is the combination of a main character skill and their partner Pokemon's move. Each quest acts similar to an episode of the Pokemon anime, including an OP and ED for each quest, as well as special eye catches for certain quests. Quests take place in the alternate world where the rules of Pokemon can be different. We've also had Pokemon Dollhouse, so this mode has made uh, this mode was made to encourage fans of Pokemon uh, Treta uh, to play the main series games. You can play with up to six Pokemon toys and put them in various dollhouses and interact with them in a low maintenance mode for everyone. You can even scale them to take pictures. And then along with this mode was figure battles where the player collects various figurines of all kinds of trainers. Figurines have their own teams, rarities, and ranks. Several trainers even have figures that feature different poses. So that would have been cool. Obviously like a collecting uh, sort of mini game. And we would have also had Survival Island, which is a giant facility that spans an entire island. Robotic Pokemon roam the island freely and it's your job along with three other friends to come together to defeat them. So this would have been another like online situation. Uh, you can also use NPCs as teammates if you don't have any friends. 
The goal, a bit harsh. Uh, the goal is to defeat as many robotic Pokemon as possible within the time limit. You pick up to three Pokemon and you play as them in the mode, similar to the Synchro Machine. So as you can use any of the four attacks your Pokemon know to combat the robotic Pokemon. Unfortunately, there are no Pokemon centers, so to heal, players must utilize the berries throughout the island. So that would have sounded like a really cool kind of online sort of mode for you and your friends. It would have been so, so cool. Uh, we have battle features and modes. So the theme of the game is tranquility between humans and Pokemon. So trainers now have their own set of techniques they can use in various ways during gameplay. So skills can benefit battling, catching, fishing, riding a bike, etc. Depending on the number of skills mastered, the trainer will exclude a unique, uh, exude a unique um, aura during battle. Would have had assists. So during battle, you can temporarily add another Pokemon to your team as if you were using an item. Various effects can be activated via assists, but the Pokemon returns after the assist is used. Would have had auto guard. Uh, so you can, if you, if your lead Pokemon is about to receive a super effective attack uh, that could deal significant damage, one of your reserve Pokemon with a better type matchup will intercept the attack. We would have had begging. So during battles, sometimes reserve Pokemon will express their desire to battle, and if you switch them in, their experience gain is multiplied by 1.25. Sky battles, which obviously were in X and Y, they're returning from X and Y. These battles take place in the sky. If two Pokemon use moves like fly or bounce. The battle transitions into a sky battle. Uh, mix Ball, so a new Pokeball that combines the effects of different Pokeballs into one. So we would have had a new Pokeball that would have... So I don't know if that's like just one specific Mix Ball, or you could have combined like, I don't know, the Beast Ball and the Quick Ball, or maybe like uh, the Love Ball and the Luxury Ball or something like that um, to, to make these different Mix Balls. Cancelling egg hatching. So eggs can now be prevented from hatching, similar to how evolutions can be cancelled. If you do so, the IVs and other characteristics may change. That could have been crazy for shiny hunting as well. Like if that affected shinies, that would have been wild. Because you could literally have just bred one egg, or I guess bred five eggs in your team, hatched them all. If they weren't shiny, just reset. And it would have saved so much time having to constantly breed more eggs. That would have been wild if it changed the shinies. I mean, if, I'm assuming if it changes the IVs and other characteristics, it would have changed the shiny chance. That would have been crazy. Uh, meta trainers. So a new class of trainers that adapt their team based on your team composition. Mirror trainers, which is a new class of trainers who use the same team as the player. A ball change at the start of battles. You can change the type of Pokeball used. Trainer zones. So a new way for trainers to engage in battles where they compete for control over the zone, offering effects such as damage reduction or benefits like increased capture rates in wild battles. Trainer zones have three levels, with higher level trainers able to use up to three effects, which can be customized. 6v6 battle, which is exclusive to a battle facility. Full battles, where victory is based on who wins the most games. Switch battle, which is exclusive to a battle facility. Uh, the lead Pokemon changes at the start for e of each turn. We have no abilities, so standard battles where Pokemon cannot activate their abilities. Level 10 battle, so standard battles where all Pokemon are set to level 10. Infinite battle, which is a roguelike mode where you continuously battle um one opponent after another uh, with the option to switch pokemon depending on the next one uh, on the next opponent strategic uh, use of recovery moves with high pp and abilities is crucial we are, would have had illusionary battles which is standard battles when uh, where all pokemon have the illusion ability which would have been wild and then trick room battle as well which standard battles uh, where trick uh, room is always active we would have also had team battles as well, which you can create a team of five trainers, including the player, to compete in large-scale battles in a unique facility. To create a team, you must recruit trainers via various methods, and after meeting different conditions, after that, you can train your team members, change their lineups, or even send them uh, on journeys to go raise levels and possibly catch new Pokemon. The IVs and other characteristics are randomized. So that's a lot of scrapped content from Pokemon Sun and Moon. Um, the job feature sounded really cool. I feel like we missed out on that. Survival Island sounds really cool as well. Um, that sounds like a really awesome like online mode. Um, all these different battle features as well. Like, yeah, it's just wild, man. Like I say, if you want to take a look at the screenshots, it's all on this page here on Nintendo Everything at the very bottom of the page. You can just kind of scroll through them all. Um, but yeah, obviously I can't show them. But uh, yeah, we missed out. We missed out on a lot of stuff from Sun and Moon. It would have been interesting to see if, uh, like I say, the Masuda method would have been changed completely as well um, with, with that sort of breeding, uh, being able to stop Pokemon from hatching. Um, the... 
the thing is as well, like, is that they could always use any of these features in a, in a future Pokemon game as well, which I really hope. Like, I really like the idea of Survival Island. I really want them to bring this in. Um, but obviously, they were scrapped. Maybe they come back. Who knows? But, uh, yeah, we missed a lot of stuff from Sun and Moon. This Terra Leak is crazy, man. It's showing what we could have had for so much stuff. Like, we thought X and Y was bad in terms of, like, how much stuff got scrapped. Sun and Moon was just as bad as well. But, yeah, let me know your thoughts on all that stuff. What would you love to have been in the game out of all these different features? Uh, and then also... Uh, are you happy that 4K is probably going to be on the Nintendo Switch 2? Let me know your thoughts and all that though. But yeah, if you enjoyed the video, drop a like. Let's try it at 500. Leave a comment. Uh, subscribe if you're brand new. Ring the notification bell for daily Pokemon content. Have a fantastic rest of your day. And until next time, peace.